Hello folks, today I'm going to be tackling Plex Nidia server. Now, for the first part to make video shorter, I'm going to skip the installation of a VM like I did last with um, Debian. I'm going to be using Ubuntu 16.04 as the core. I'm going to install that as a VM. I'm going to give it, you know, six cores and maybe 8 gigs of RAM or whatnot. Uh, you can assign whatever you have to your media server, whatever you deem appropriate. Uh, since I want to have at least two to three good HD streams, I'm going to give it, you know, some better numbers there. And then after I test it, I can, you can always adjust the settings of your VM if you have too much of, or too little. I figure six cores, um, 8 gigs of RAM should be okay for at least two, two great HD streams. So these are the steps we're going to take today in installing Plex on a headless Unify server. Number one, well, now that we have the installation part out of the way, well, the server itself, is we are going to add repositories for Plex Media Server. And um, number two, we're going to install the Plex Media Server. Number three, we're going to install SIFs. Number four, I am going to mount a remote directory because I have all my media files on a different server. It, they're not going to be located on this media server because this media server runs in a VM. So I am going to permanently mount a network location on my uh, media server to which I'm going to um, pull the data from in Plex. So we're going to mount remote files permanently in Ubuntu headless unit and then we're going to start the Plex and we are going to uh, add folders just to make sure that everything works. So if you're interested in um, learning how to do this, stay with me. I will go through uh, to my computer right now and I'm going to guide you through the process. It's, it shouldn't take too long this time. So I'm just going to SSH uh, into the box and that is SSH user at machine. All right, first time I'm logging in, it asks me if I want a key. Yes, I want a key. So, there we go. So, what is the first thing I want to do post installation? Well, I know update and upgrade. So, sudo apt get update and then oh, I'm off my game today. sudo apt get upgrade. And uh, hit yes. And it's going to ask for password again. I should just switch user to root, which I will do after this is done. So I'm going to pause here. Let's see. All right, we're back. I've cleared it. So we did our updates and upgrades, the initial post initial installation. And the next thing to do, well, it's really not going to be that difficult, I don't think. I need to set up curl. So I'm going to install curl to make the process a little bit easier. And then uh, I'm going to do some copying and pasting of commands. All right, so it's it should be sudo. Actually, I'm going to switch user to root. Sudo, sudo. Now I'm root, so I don't have to keep typing sudo. All right, so now that I'm root, I can do apt install curl curl is already great I have curl um, next thing so I'm going to uh, copy and paste a series of commands which I will happily provide you with and I will explain what it means well first one is I need to add a repository and what, what it's gonna say it's gonna add this source See, 
downloads of plex.tv.repo.debian uh, to public main and then I'm going to add that to my Etsy app sources list the plex media server dot list I'm adding a, a, a software repository source to my software list after which I'm gonna have to do update and update up naturally okay all right so now I have it if if I were to look for it uh, let's say cat Etsy apt sources list dot D and then flex media server dot list now when I issue this command it should read directly from this file that I've added so it should just say this inside if it says anything else it's wrong all right and it is so it just has one line it's it tells the system where to uh, where to look for the sources for the applications all right so now I'm going to use a curl command and again it's the same thing go to this place get the key and add to the key server and that's it and see it says okay all right so this wouldn't work without curl if you don't have curl install curl sudo up get i don't again i don't need sudo up get update i need um apt get install plex media server all right because i have added the repo for the list i can just install it from directly from the software repo so this should work and it's going to ask me do i want to install it and i will it's downloading it it's 105 megabytes all right so it fetched the file now it's going to depackage it and install it and something's happening it's unpacking all right all right it's going to ask me yes or no just hit yes all right our server should be up and up page top make sure Plex app system Plex media server resources Plex media or we can confirm that system control it's running it's active running all right Plex is up <laughs> All right, so I can access the Plex web UI, which means I need to work on the next thing. I need to work on mounting a Linux file system in Ubuntu because my media files are remote. They are not, I repeat, they're not on this server because this is a virtual machine headless unit my media files are stored on my storage server so this is a trick that a lot of the people probably have an interest in learning how to do but it's fairly simple as I shall demonstrate it really is not that difficult okay so what I'm going to show you applies well to me let's say I have a storage server running on a local network so I can use an IP address of that server to mount it directly I have to install um, SIFS utilities so up get install SIFS CIFS dash UTILS yes I also need to um, create so uh, let's see CD media I need to create a share here so I'm going to create um, make their flex share all right now that we have created this plex share in the media next thing I need to do is I need to mount this protected web folder so I have SIFS installed I've created Plex share directory inside the media folder. Okay, folks, the last thing 
well, almost the last thing we need to do is we need to edit the Etsy FS tab. So how do we do that? Well, it's not difficult. I'm going to use Nano. You might like Vi or some other editor, but I, I like Nano. So Nano, because I'm rude, I don't need sudo, and Etsy FS tab. Now, I've already added these three lines to the bottom. This file, you don't want to mess with this file, because if you see these UUIDs, if you see these, this is what tells system to look for where the swap area is located, where the disks are. So you mess up with, with any of that stuff, you will not be able to boot into the system. Okay, so usually what you want to do is you want to go to the last line and then, you know, hit enter, go to the uh, add stuff to the bottom. And as before, if you put a hashtag that comments out, uh, that comments out the line. So these two lines are commented out. I purposely made two of these to show you. Well, one is if you want to use a username and password, etc., etc., um, for uh, your network mount. And the second one is is I like to use guest. Why do I use guest? Well, uh, my network file location has guest access, so guest can read files only. And that's all I really need. I don't need my Plex Media Server to go in and to change, to delete files, so I can give my, you know, seven-year-old kid access to Plex Media so she won't break anything. <laughs> Uh, or your spouse or anybody who uh, desires access. So if I'm just using a guest access to this network share, that's fine. I can read the files. I don't need anything else. So I'm going to use guest. But you can also use full username and password. And then, you, you know, you can set up permissions on that folder. And, you know, you can have your Plex Media server uh, be able to delete files directly and... Uh, depend depends how much you want to invest in that um, Plex Media Server, how much control you want to give Plex Media Server and users using Plex, Plex Media Server. F for example, for me, um, this network location works fine. I can access it anytime I want and then add files and whatnot and then just uh, rescan the data store really fast to add them to the Plex. That means nothing to me. So, this is entirely up to you, okay? So, let me explain this line. So, in the beginning, I have my server, right? So, we have slash slash, and then your server. This could be a frequently qualified domain name, or you could use an IP address like I am on my local network. And then, the, the location of your shared folder. And then, you hit space, and then you tell it where, uh, where you put, you can name this... Um, Remember when I created a directory for Plex Share in Media? Well, this is it. I'm telling it mount it here. And I'm telling it it's SIFS for Windows. And I'm telling it I want to log in as guest. Uh, user can put UID or... And then again, IO uh, character set uh, UTF-8. And then there's zero, there's zero. That's it. All right. So this is all for FS tab. You can do then mount A. Or, as you should, you should just reboot the server once. And what that is going to do is going to uh, go through FSTab and mount this on boot so that you have access to it. So without further ado, let's jump into our web interface of Plex and then add these media folders. Well, let's log into the Plex. All right, so I'm logged in. Got it. Yeah, yeah. Try to sell me stuff. Uh, yeah, I'll set you up later. Not worry about you right now. All right, so let's add a lab library, and let's go to movies. Let's add a folder. Let's go to Plex Share, and let's do film. All right, so that worked. I'm going to do the same thing for TV shows. 
add folder, go to my Plex share, and then shows, and then add. And then I'm gonna add that in the library. I'm then gonna do some more. Let's do music, add folders. Well, this helps, but you see, I have this, the file server in which under one folder I have subfolders containing all my files. So when I mount this, I only mount the top file folder under which all my other folders are located. And then I can just simply navigate to my share that actually is connected on boot. So this share is connected on boot. I don't have to think about it. It's automatically done. And as if you remember, I've added repos when I installed Plex. So the Plex will get updates. I just log in and run sudo update, get up, update and upgrade and done. Plex is automatically upgraded as well. It really is a great solution to a big problem. Uh, okay, what am I working on? So I did that. Uh, I added movies and shows. Or, uh, okay, so let's add music. And simple as that. All right, add library. Let's do um, photos in the same way. And then I could add home videos if I wanted. No, not photos, other videos. And I could add as many libraries or as little libraries as I want. So it really is up to you beyond what how many libraries you want. But let me recap this one more time. So we've created a server from scratch. And we've um, we've created a server from scratch installed Plex Media Server on it, added SIFs, added remote folders, logged into our server, added media, and got it up and running. So this web server actually has uh, six CPUs uh, in a VM I gave it, and I gave it, I don't even remember how much RAM, but I'll, after I test it, I, I will be able to tell you how many streams I'm able to get so once it goes through and updates the database and all that, I will be able to uh, use it. I could have also copied the old database and just restored it, but eh, I'm not really worried about bandwidth or, or re-downloading images or any of that. I know there's lots of people in the world that do have to worry about that. Luckily, I don't have to, so I can just let it scan and redo its thing. Anyway, folks, thanks a lot for watching. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I can go into more detail uh, to uh, make this working for you. Like I said, in uh, Etsy FS tab, if you use guest, it'll work fine. Just use guest for your user. It'll work just fine. Trust me. Uh, then, you, you know, your Plex will not be able to delete files. Maybe that's even better because if you give access to your kids for Plex, <laughs> and they log in, they, they, they're not going to be able to mess up your flex. So uh, there's an inherent ben benefit for using network folder and, and permissions like that, giving your mounts um, just read access. So thanks a lot, and um, I'll see you on the channel again soon. Bye.